In this video, I'll show you how I made the stainless steel exhaust system for my friend Neil's Kawasaki Z1R Turbo. It's a monster machine. I've just come back from a ride. It pulls and pulls and pulls. Absolutely amazing, but it's really raw with not an ECU or computer in sight. The first thing I need to do is to make some new stainless steel flanges that bolt to the turbo and the manifold at the front. I'm going to make these out four millimeter thick stainless steel. So I'll draw around the existing ones I like a template. So using my Sharpie pen, I draw around the outside of each flange. I'll mark out the holes as well while I'm at it. With everything marked out, I go out to my shed to use my angle grinder. This is a good way of cutting stainless sheet. If you use the one millimeter thick disc wheels, it cuts like butter. With all the pieces cut out, I changed the cutting disc for a flapper wheel. This is amazing for deep bearing. You just go around the edge, follow the profile, and to get the shape you require. With all the parts cut to shape and deburred, I go back in the garage to mark out the central hole. I'm going to do this on my lathe by setting the part up in a three-jaw chuck and trepanning in, cutting out the large diameter hole to match the pipe that it's going to marry up with. With the last cut done, I check with my Werner caliper and it seems to be about okay, so I offer it up to the pipe and it fits perfect. I'm well pleased with that, that's just the job. Some of the marker pen has burnt off with the heat from the grinding process, so I clamp it to the flange with my mole grips and mark them again. With the three holes marked, the next thing I need to do is centre punch the centres. With the hole position centre punched, I use my pillar drill to drill the holes. I grip the flange with my mole grips so I can hold it secure to prevent it from slipping. With all the flanges drilled and deburred, the next thing I need to do is shrink some big pipe down to a smaller size to fit the small pipe ready for welding. The large diameter pipe, which will become the rear silencer, also needs to be nice and radiused. So to do this, I turn up a piece of aluminium that's a reasonably tight fit in the bore and tap it in with a hammer, about half an inch down. With the aluminium former tapped into place, the next thing I do is start hammering the edge Gently hammering it over, because eventually this will be a nice curve. You keep going round and round and round with perseverance, and you, you can see it forming right in front of your eyes. It's starting to look really good. The form is actually taking shape, but the aluminium former keeps moving. So I found this little bit of wood to stick in. I can slide it between the flowers without breaking them, rest it against the shed, and I can carry on with the hammering. I've been hammering for quite a while now, so I thought I'd have a quick check, and it's nearly there. The diameter at the end of the pipe is reduced quite a lot now and the actual former is less important so I stand the pipe upright and hammer it over for the last little bit. And there we go, it fits perfect. The exhaust system fitted to a Z1R Turbo has a characteristic slash cut at the end. And it's the length of my iPhone and about 30 degrees, so I just cut it by eye. 
It takes a while, but I persevere and get there in the end. With the slash cut complete, I use my file to take off all the sharp edges and give it a nice smooth finish. With the tailpipe basically finished, ready for welding, I decided to get on with the front pipe that connects the manifold through to the turbo. The existing one was no good. I offered it up just to see, but it doesn't fit at all. I'm gonna be using 180 degree stainless steel bends purchased from eBay. So what I did is laid it over the original manifold because the front part was basically right. So I can mark out roughly where to cut it. Well, that's the first cut done and the flange fits nicely. And I've marked where the second cut's gonna be. I'll just double check. Yep, it's fine. I cut the second cut, then it marries up with the other pipe ready for welding. And then I weld on the flange. With the flange welded, I offer it up to the bike and bolt it in place to make sure it fits before I do the next piece. But there's a problem. I haven't got a piece of pipe to bend around to the turbo. Hello? Is that Neil? Neil, when you dropped that Z1 over, did you happen to leave a bit of the pipe behind? I'm just welding up the manifold and there seems to be a bit missing. You did? Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll whiz over my Z1 and get it right now, because I need it today. All right, I'll catch you in a bit. Bye. Neil, you got that bit of pipe? Yeah, I've got it here. Oh, thank you. I'm not buying another one, so don't copy it. <laughs> I'll give you a shout when it's done. <laughs> Well, back in the garage, I finally got all the pieces of the pipe I need to complete the system. But I thought what I might do is actually finish the back first. So I pick up the big bend and start cutting that to fit the rear silencer. There's only a couple of cuts to do, then it should marry up nicely with my rear silencer. I grip the pipe bend in the vise. It's two and a half inches outside diameter. It's amazing how much stress is in the actual curve from the bending process. So when I start to cut, it sometimes grips the blade and you have to adjust the vise to take the grip off. With all the parts of the rear pipe cut, I just check they fit together nicely before welding. And then I'm gonna make up a special device for polishing them. I use a strip of abronet of razor cloth and glue the ends together using Q-Bond. Q-Bond is like a fine powder you sprinkle on then drip on super glue. It sets really hard in a few seconds, joining the two pieces together. I then use my Swiss Army knife scissors to trim off the excess cube on flashing. And we're ready to go. I slip the hoop of Abronet cloth over the pipe, then use my electric drill with a wire brush in the chuck to power it. It takes a bit of practice to keep it in line. It's like an old traction engine driving a thrashing machine with a big flat belt. But after a bit of practice, you can drive it anywhere. It makes an amazing finish and it's so easy to do. And 
as you can see, the joint has survived perfectly and is still intact. Now, back to the front part that I was making earlier, I cut the little hoop in half and I had one millimetre to come off, so I cut it off with the saw and then the part fitted perfectly on the bike ready for welding. I held it in place by hand and did a very small tack weld to hold it still while I carried out the rest of the welds that I could get to on the bike, then removed it from the bike and finished it off in the vise. With all the welds complete, I replaced it onto the bike and did up all the bolts tight to make sure it still fitted, which it did. Then I removed it and put it back in my vise to use my internal belt sander to clean up all the welds. To finish off, I used some very fine Abronet cloth, just to give it a nice sheen. And here it is, all fitted to the bike and bolted up tight. I fitted the original heat shield just to protect my legs, but then when I sat on the bike, it's amazing how your leg fits in between the front pipe, the back pipe and the turbocharger. It's going to be proper warm, but I suppose as long as you're not touching it, it's okay. I'll have to remember when I'm riding not to lean in and touch the actual turbocharger. I bet that's pretty hot. But anyway, let's take it for a ride. my video and don't forget to subscribe for me it was an amazing experience riding the z1r turbo it's years since i've ridden one and i'd completely forgotten how fast they actually are they're so raw if you get a chance to ride one you shouldn't turn it down